Hello everyone, I'm Takashi from NTT. Today I will talk about Need from Snag. This is a joint work with Fuyuki and Takahiro. This is one line summary of this work. We construct NISC from SNARK and one way function. From now, I will explain what are NISC and SNARK. Both NISC and SNARK are types of non interactive arguments, and especially we focus those in the CRS model in this work. In this model, a trusted third party run the set up algorithm to generate a common reference string and this is distributed to both prover and verifier. Then prover given a statement x and a witness w of some NP language and generates some proof pi and sends this proof to the verifier. Given this proof pi and also statement x and also common reference string, verifier outputs acceptance or rejection. We require the following two properties uh, for non-interactive arguments. The first is completeness, which just means that if the protocol is run honestly, then the verifier accepts uh, with probability 1. And the second is soundness, and especially we consider computational adaptive soundness, uh, which means that computationally bounded prover cannot convince a verifier of a false statement. And uh, adaptive means that prover can choose statement for statement x depending on common reference string. So if we only consider uh, completeness and soundness, then that is trivial because we can just think of witness itself as a proof. So we have to add some additional property to make the notion non-trivial. Uh, the first is the NISC, uh, which satisfies additional property called zero knowledge. And uh, there are several flavors of zero knowledge, but uh, intuitively zero knowledge means that verifier learns nothing beyond the fact that X is yes instance. And especially we consider multi theorem adaptive zero knowledge. Uh, but so the precise definition of this notion is not needed in this talk, so I will omit the definition. And the second primitive is SNARK, uh, which is a non-interactive argument with additional property called succinctness and optionally efficient verification. So succinctness means that the proof size is small and typically much more than statement size and witness size, and especially we consider the following two notions of succinctness. The first is delta succinctness for some constant delta between 0 and 1, uh, which means that the proof size is polylambda times uh, statement size plus witness size to the power of delta. And the second is full succinctness, uh, which means that proof size is sub-polynomial or in the Proof, uh, with, sorry, so statement size and width size. And also we consider efficient verification property. Uh, this means that verification can be done in time uh, sub-polynomial in the statement size plus witness size. So because the verification algorithm takes uh, proof as an input, so efficient verification property immediately implies full succinctness. And uh, usually, we think of efficient verification property as a default requirement for SNARK. However, in this talk, in this work, we construct NISC from SNARK and we use SNARK as a building block uh, primitive. So we also think about these weaker security notions, weak, no, weaker properties uh, to make our assumptions weaker. And uh, here I would like to review known constructions of NISC and SNARK. So there are many constructions of NISC based on various kinds of assumptions, such as trapdoor permutation, pairing, lattice, and obfuscation. On the other hand, 
there is no known construction of snark based on standard assumption. And known constructions of snark are either based on random oracle or based on non falsifiable assumption on pairings. And there even exists some negative result about constructing snark from standard assumptions. Given this situation, uh, we may want to ask, is SNARK stronger than NISC? That is, uh, is it more difficult to construct SNARK than constructing NISC? And uh, intuitively, this is correct. However, there were no known relationship between these two primitives. And so the motivation of this work is to uh, study the relationship between them. This is our results. So first, uh, we construct NISIC from SNARG with delta succinctness for delta more than one half and one way function. And the second result is we construct the knowledge SNARG with efficient verification from SNARG with efficient verification and CPE secure public key encryption. And actually, this second result uh, follows as an easy corollary of the first result. And also, along the way of obtaining these results, uh, we also give a generic conversion from non-adaptive zero knowledge to adaptive zero knowledge for non-interactive argument. And uh, this may be of independent interest. In this talk, in the rest of this talk, I will focus on explaining our first result, NISC from Snark. So I would like to explain our roadmap. So our construction is based on the hidden bit paradigm by Feige, Lapidot, and Shamir. And uh, in that paradigm, uh, we combine uh, what is called NISC in hidden bit model and hidden bit generator to construct NISC in fierce model. So, and uh, there exists NISC in hidden bit model unconditionally. So, the existence of hidden bit generator uh, immediately implies the existence of NISC in fierce model. So, if we can construct hidden bit generator from snag and one way function, then we are done. Unfortunately, uh, we couldn't prove this. Instead, we introduce a variant of hidden bit generator, which we call subset dependent proofs hidden bit generator. And then we prove that this variant suffices for constructing NISC in CS model uh, with almost the same construction. Then we prove that uh, this primitive can be constructed based on snag and one way function uh, going through a uh, notion of leakage resilient weak PRF. From now, I will explain the construction of CRS music uh, based on hidden bit paradigm. And uh, we will use the two building blocks and the first building block is music in hidden bit model or HBM music for short. In this primitive, a uh, prover is first given random k bit string denoted by rho, uh, also referred to as a hidden bit. And the prover generates a proof pi along with some subset of indices uh, which specifies the which bit of rho should be revealed to the verifier. After prover generates this, a uh, verifier is given a substring of hidden bits corresponding to the subset i, and then it decides if it accepts or rejects. And we require three properties of completeness, soundness, and their knowledge, uh, which are defined similarly to those for the CRS music. And uh, it is proven that uh, there exists hidden bit model music for all NP languages unconditionally without any assumption. C 
second building block is hidden bit generator. This primitive consists of the following three algorithms. The first algorithm is the setup algorithm that takes the security parameter and the hidden bit length as input and outputs a common reference string. And the second algorithm is bit generation algorithm, uh, which takes common reference string as input and outputs commitment uh, kbit string r and uh, uh, proofs pi sub i for i equal 1 to k. Intuitively, com is a commitment of some seed of PLG and r corresponds to the PLG value derived from that seed and pi sub i is considered as a certificate for the i bit of r. And the third algorithm is verification algorithm uh, which verifies the validity of the i bit of r by uh, checking the i proof pi i. And we require the following four properties. The completeness just says that verification accepts with probability 1 uh, if everything is done honestly. The second is hiding property, uh, which says that r sub i is pseudo random as long as the i's proof pi sub i is not given to the adversary. And the third property is binding property, uh, which roughly says that commitment responds to a unique r. So more precisely, uh, this means that for any fixed commitment, there is this a unique corresponding R such that any polynomial time adversary can generate a proof pi only for corresponding bit of this corresponding R. And uh, the fourth property is succinct commitment property, uh, which means that the length of commitment is much more than the hidden bit length k. So Roughly, this means that the corresponding PLG is sufficiently length increasing. And then I will explain how to construct CR's music uh, combining these two building blocks. So in the setup phase, the trusted third party runs the setup algorithm of hidden bit generator and also uh, picks some k-bit string S. Then, uh, prover first ran the uh, bit generation algorithm of hidden bit generator to generate com, r, and pi, and then uh, generates, sets the hidden bit row as a xor of r uh, derived from bit generation algorithm and s uh, in the uh, common reference string. Then, uh, considering this row as hidden bit of HBM NISIC and run the prover algorithm of HBM NISIC to generate i and pi of the hidden bit model NISIC. Then, it sends i, pi, HBM, com, r sub i, and pi sub i as a NISIC proof to the verifier. And here, r sub i is a substring of r corresponding to the subset i, and pi is also defined similarly. Given this proof, verifier first recovers the substring of hidden bits corresponding to the subset i by exploring r sub i and s sub i, and then it verifies the following two things. The first is the validity of the values of r sub i for each index i in the uh, subset capital I. And uh, the second is the validity of the proof of the HBM NISC. And if both uh, verification uh, is verification passes, then it outputs accept. And uh, it is proven that uh, this construction satisfies soundness and derived property and that this is a secure CRS music. And uh, intuitively, 
uh, we implement the hidden bit model by using a hidden bit generator. And so we can reduce the, the, the soundness and the energy property of this CRS music to those of the underlying hidden bit model music. So, uh, so far, I explained that hidden bit model music and hidden bit generator implies CRS music and hidden bit model music uh, exists unconditionally. So if we can construct hidden bit generator from snug and warming function, then we are done. So we try to uh, do so uh, based on uh, leakage regime to weak PRF. So leakage regime to weak PRF is a keyed function uh, like this. And uh, this satisfies the following security notion called L leakage regimes. Uh, this says that uh, if key K is chosen randomly from the key space, then the function value on random input X star is computationally indistinguishable from uniformly random string, even if a distinguisher sees arbitrary number of input output pairs on random inputs and also L bit leakage of the key K uh, that doesn't depend on the challenge input X star. And uh, Hazard et al. proves that there exists uh, L leakage regiment weak PLF for any polynomial L based on only one way function. So we will rely on this. This is our first attempt to construct hidden bit generator from snag and leakage regiment weak PLF and we additionally use some statistically binding commitment. So in this construction, uh, the setup algorithm runs the setup algorithm of SNARK and also picks uh, k random string uh, in the input space of the weak PRF and then outputs them as a CRS of the hidden bit generator. Then the bit generation algorithm uh, picks a random key of the weak PRF and then commit to this key K to generate the commitment com and set R sub I as a PR, weak PRF value uh, on the input X sub I. And then the proof pi sub I is generated by the SNARK, which proves that the value of R sub I is consistent to the key that is committed inside the commitment. And then uh, it outputs them. And then the verification algorithm just run the verification algorithm of SNARK. And then completeness and succinct commitment properties are clear. And the binding property is also easy to reduce to soundness of SNARK and statistical binding property of commitment. So what is left is hiding the property. So for proving the hiding the property, our idea is to use L leakage regime of weak PRF by considering the snug proof as a leakage from the key K. However, here are at least two problems. The first problem is that uh, what depends on key k is not only snug proof pi and the commitment also depends on k even though it computationally hides k. So we cannot re directly apply the leakage regimes of the weak PRF. And the second problem is that even if we ignore the commitment, uh, each proof pi sub i is short, but the combination of pi sub i for some subset capital I uh, may not be short. And especially the hiding adversary is given this combination of proofs. And so for such adversary, we may not be able to uh, bound, upper bound the leakage length by some bound L. 
to resolve these two problems, uh, our solutions are as follows. To resolve the first problem, we just delete commitment uh, from the output of bit generation algorithm. And the sec to resolve the second problem, uh, we generate uh, pi sub i corresponding to the subset to capital I in one shot manner instead of generating uh, pi sub i for each bit separately. So though our idea is like this, this idea cannot be captured by the syntax of the original hidden bit generator. So we introduce a variant which we call subset dependent proof hidden bit generator. So this is the definition of subset dependent proof hidden bit generator. The difference from the original hidden bit generator is that uh, we divide the bit generation algorithm into the two parts, bit generation part and the proof generation part. And also bit generation part doesn't output commitment. Uh, then uh, we require the following three properties. Completeness and hiding are defined similarly to those uh, for the original hidden bit generator. On the other hand, uh, we cannot define the binding and uh, succinct commitment in a meaningful way for this variant because we no longer have commitment in the output of bit generation algorithm. So instead, uh, we uh, consider, we introduce a kind of combined property of them to define somewhat binding property. This property requires that for any fixed common reference string, the number of R for which valid proof can be generated is much more than 2 to the K. And uh, we observe that this is the essential property that is needed to prove the soundness of the CRS music. So we show that uh, SDP HBG suffices for constructing CRS music uh, instead of uh, HBG. So what is left is to construct SDP HBG from SNARG and the leakage regent with PLF. And the construction is very similar to the, our first attempt construction, except that uh, we just omit the commitment. And also we generate the snug proof pi sub i in one shot manner instead of generating this for each bit separately. Uh, then the completeness is clear. And uh, for proving hiding the property, we use leakage regions of the weak PLF and especially, we consider uh, snug proof pi sub i as a leakage from key k. So as long as the proof length is more than L, then we can complete the proof. And for the somewhat binding, uh, by the soundness of snug, our polynomial time adversary can generate a valid proof only for a substring of R of this form for some key k. This means that the number of such R is 2 to the kappa. So we have somewhat binding property if the key length is much more than K. So we can complete the proof if we can set parameters so that the proof size is more than or equal to L and the key length is much more than uh, the hidden bit length K. And if SNARG satisfies full succinctness, then this is easy because in this case, the proof size is bounded by some fixed polynomial. So we can just uh, set L and K to be sufficient to large polynomial, then everything is done. On the other hand, there are some non-triviality in the delta succinctness case because of the dependence of proof size on the, on the key length. However, uh, we show that uh, the same construction works as long as delta is more than one half. This is summary. We construct music from snug and one-way function. 
And though I didn't explain the detail, as a simple corollary of this result, we also obtained zero knowledge snag from snag and public key encryption. This is the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention.